I appreciate the opportunity to address our body this afternoon. No woman should be forced into any decisions concerning her own reproductive health, including pregnancy. These sentiments are so unanimous and supported that they are already laws on the books that protect women from coercion and discrimination when it comes to pregnancy. Michigan's existing informed consent laws already mandates that women's consent to an abortion must be, and I quote, given freely and without coercion. So we already have statutes that make this illegal. Michigan's Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act already, already protects women from discrimination based on actions related to pregnancy. And this act was further strengthened to protect women in the workplace when pregnant. So House Bills 4787 and 4830 are not only redundant, but they are disingenuous. And it leads me to wonder why legislation before us is needed. And what is the actual reason these bills are coming before us today? Because in reality, it seems that coercive abortion legislation is a byproduct of a campaign to market the theory that any woman who seeks an abortion does so, does so because she is confused, misled, or coerced. Regardless of the fact that constant studies consistently show this to be untrue. These bills are not only unnecessary, but they will undoubtedly have unlimited consequences in blurring the law. So let's stop attacking women's rights that were guaranteed to us 43 years ago and start addressing real issues we can solve. If our goal is to truly reduce unintended pregnancies in Michigan, we have to focus on prevention first. Access to comprehensive and affordable health care for women should be a top priority. Maternal and prenatal health care for women, especially low-income women, should be a priority. Expanding insurance coverage for contraceptives and providing comprehensive sex education to young people should be a priority. And finally, ending domestic and sexual violence in our communities by investing in education and prevention resources should be a top priority. So if our goal is to truly end reproductive coercion, let's take a look at the entire picture. And again, no one should be coerced into any decision regarding their own reproductive health. Coercion, as myself and many other women see it, is part of a much larger problem of violence against women. It includes many forms of abuse, including forcing a partner to become pregnant, to carry a pregnancy, or to discontinue a pregnancy, or sabotaging a partner's form of birth control. If we really want to work on these issues, then let's focus on policies that help victims of abuse and address the broader issue of domestic, reproductive, and sexual violence. So let's help women and men who are victims of violence and work to prevent these horrible attacks and work together to create a world where both our sons and daughters will never know the fear or experience violence in their lifetime. So colleagues, I appreciate the opportunity to address you today and I urge a no vote on both bills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative. Mr. Speaker, on the question of final passage of House Bill 4787, there are 65 I votes and 43 nay votes. A majority of the members elected serving having voted therefore, the bill is passed.